And then first of all, I would like to invite you to think about to think about how you define learning outcomes, how you define learning outcomes in your own place. We have this head of using tools interactively that measure the application of knowledge in terms of the language, mathematics, science, technology, and problem solving to solve daily life problems. And then we also have very, uh, two very important areas. The second part is the ed, autonomy, and take responsibility that measure more about how the students can learn, uh, have this kind of autonomous learning, have a positive self-concept, uh, can uh, uh, um, highly motivated to learn by themselves. And also the third part of these uh, learning outcomes is about how they can be inclusive, interact in a heterogeneous group. And then in order to assess this different kind of assess, different kind of learning outcomes, we have many different kinds of assessment, like international assessment like PISA, Teams, Pearls, that you just have the results of Singapore, the outstanding performance, very good news for Singapore. And also we have our own country's national assessment at different level. And also um, we have a very high stake public examination. And also, in order to improve the uh, proper examination, we try to integrate some kind of process assessment called school-based assessment. And then this different, four different kinds of uh, assessment have their very different purpose. Some for improvement, a lot of them for accountability. Make school accountable to the student learning outcomes, to the general public. And also, in Hong Kong, we have a comprehensive model of uh, monitoring education quality with various assessments. It's a kind of system level assessment. It's supposed to be very low stake. That means the government should not use it as an indicator to monitor the progress of the, of the school. Because you don't have any uh, student intake control. Like if your school, if your school system is highly segregated, and then you get a lot of high capacity, high ability students into your school. It's likely that you have 100% of students can pass the competency, right? And then it's not a good comparison across school because you don't control the student intake. But during the past um, 10 years, this kind of TSA becomes a kind of abuse. And then the government will use some of this information to ask the individual school to improve this TSA uh, performance. And during the, the past 10 years, our student population go down, and then there's a, a kind of a risk for the schools will be closed down if they uh, don't perform well. So you can see um, this kind of TSA are supposed to be very low stake, very informative to the, to the schools to, just for improvement. But if you make it too high stick as a kind of accountability measure, it will ruin, actually ruin the learning uh, experience of the students and make the, uh, the students and parents very painful. So as I say about the comprehensive assessment in Hong Kong, it doesn't mean that it's good. We have to be very careful about what is the function of different kinds of assessment and make good use of it. So for this kind of measurement, it should be keep very low stake, not make use of it to make the school accountable because so you don't have a good uh, um, control of the student intake. So as, as you can notice, what is the limitation of these value addedness? The problem is this is only a kind of cognitive outcomes measure. And then it doesn't provide the reasons behind the value added performance. And also, uh, it's only reflect the academic performance of Susan. How about other key areas that at the very beginning we say, the key competency defined globally is that the head is only part of it, the cognitive part is only part of it. If you want your students to be stand, stable, and really can develop, the, the two feet, the two ground is very important. And there's a more and more research claiming that the non-cognitive outcomes is more important in a long, in a long one. Like if they are self-regulated, they are more likely to be a 
lifelong learners. And also they should be more inclusive, like um, this kind of in, uh, comprehensive uh, movement can let the students know more about students with different background. With different academic background, we emphasize more about the comprehend, the cooperation, not just the competition. And then this is very important, particular for global citizenship, right? 